I am so excited to be here with Francoise Weeks in her studio. She is really the inspiration. You are really the inspiration um, behind my new Row City Mysteries. That's so much fun. I know. <laughs> so we first met 20 years ago in Portland when mm -hmm. you created an amazing bridal bouquet and our whole wedding flowers. And I think you were just new to Portland at the time. Is that right? Yes, I started my business in 96, in June of 96. And what brought you to Portland? Um, my sister went to Reed College okay. in the late 60s. Uh, she got, got married, started a family, and I visited her for uh, several summers. And, uh, and then I moved here. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. How has the industry changed in the last 20 years? I mean, that's a huge question. Oh, I know. my gosh, yeah. it has changed so much. Yeah. Actually, when I moved here in uh, 77, uh, that's kind of what I wanted to do, to okay. work in the flower industry. And I was completely shocked by how little there was available here. It was like roses and baby's breath and glads and mums, and that was about it. So I kind of put that idea on the shelf. And um, things really changed and got a lot better. And then in, uh, for 20 years, I worked in a medical lab. We did chromosome studies. So it was kind of specialized um, lab work. And um, in 96, uh, there was talk that uh, the lab might close. Uh -huh. And that really is what kind of pushed me to start following my dream. And I had a really good boss, so I was able to keep on working part-time at the lab for a couple of years. And start up. And start up. I started in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best and, way to start. Uh, <laughs> yes. And then um, about after five years, I ran out of space. One day, my husband actually very kindly said to me, I would like to reclaim my space. <laughs> said, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so we decided to have this wonderful little studio built. Ah, I know. It's amazing. And so now you are offering workshops. So it's not right. just necessarily about, you know, sort of what we think of as a traditional florist who might be delivering bouquets all around right. town. What's right. your slant that... So uh, for about 17 years, I did uh, a lot of weddings. Mine included. It was amazing. <laughs> we'll find photos to leave in. <laughs> uh, I actually did over 800. So I've done a lot of them. 800. Yeah, oh I've done gosh. a lot of them. Yeah. Um, in, uh, I started to teach uh, evening classes here uh, in 2003. In uh, 2008, I was asked to start teaching uh, wedding workshops. And then... Um, I kind of um, decided that maybe that was a nice different route to go. I was in my mid-50s at the time, and I thought it would be a good thing to develop that side of the business. Um, and uh, unfortunately, there weren't all, the workshops weren't very well attended, uh, but they were attended by people who were from out of state or even uh, from other countries. And so I was encouraged for two years to take them on the road. And I didn't want to do it because it was scary. <laughs> uh, but I leap. finally yeah. did. And um, it took off to, in a way that I never, ever ex ex had expected. And um, I uh, basically don't do weddings anymore. I still do a few events, uh, but I travel a lot and I love it. And you travel the world. We're not just talking, you know. Mm -hmm. So how many countries did you go to last year? <laughs> um, let's see. I went twice to China, I went to um, uh, um, Sweden, that was last year, and then this year I went to Iceland, and I also went twice again to China, and then to uh, um, uh, Canada, so, um, and then I feel, have a few things in the works for next year, so it's really fun. And how do you think social media, like in sort of our more modern Instagram age has played into that. Like, could you have done this 20 years ago? Oh, no. Yeah. No. Uh, it's um, social media. I wouldn't be in business without social media. Uh, so, for instance, uh, the school in China discovered me on Instagram in 2015, and I went once. Um, it's a design school. They do uh, fashion design, interior design, and floral design. 
and I went to teach for six days. And uh, the last evening, the last day, they took me out to dinner, and it was like the first thing they asked me, "Want to come back?" <laughs> <laughs> so that was yes, good. yes. So then we signed a three-year contract, and um, so it's. Uh, but pretty much, I always ask students or people who who uh, host the workshop, "How did you find out about the workshops?" And they, it's always social it's all media. social media it's always social media and i think some people have this perception that with social media with instagram let's use that because i'm on instagram too that um you know you have such a visual lush product that you take a picture and you post it on instagram and mm -hmm. that's the end of it there's no work that goes into oh, it no it yeah. doesn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> can you talk a little bit about like yeah yeah so um so you definitely have to promote what you're going to do right it's it's not just a matter like you say to post you yeah. you have to talk a little bit of how uh what you're going to teach um, uh, and you have to post on a regular basis I post I post every day on um, Instagram Facebook and Twitter and you're uh, doing this yourself I do it myself. in addition to all the work that you're doing yeah. right yeah and of course uh, I, I try to not talk more than once every two weeks or so about workshops sure. so uh, I, I post a lot of pictures of um, beautiful flowers and of work that I have done and that the students have done. Right. So I really like to showcase uh, what they can make uh, or make during the workshops. And uh, those always get a lot of likes and hits yeah. uh, too. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. That's amazing. How do you feel like um, the global flower community mm -hmm. is unique? Well, I think that uh, the flower community in different countries really are different. Interesting. Okay. So I think that having grown up in Belgium, I, I can say that it's a different culture. Ah. There is a different flower culture in Europe versus here. Uh, for instance, when I grew up, you know, we always had flowers at home. Most people have flowers at home. You go out to dinner, you never bring wine or food. You, you always bring flowers, flowers uh -huh. or have flowers delivered. Yeah. That's even better so that the host <laughs> doesn't have to go in the kitchen to arrange the flowers. Um, uh, over in Europe, they do a lot of uh, workshops, they do a lot of uh, floral fashion shows, they do a lot of competitions. Uh, and I think from what I see, rarely would it be something that as a florist you would do for uh, uh for a, a, a small delivery or any so so it's always outside the box right. uh, a lot of it is um, are things that are structural so these people really think about creating these these big structures and then decorating them with flowers it's something that you really don't see very much here in comparison last year i went to this amazing annual show in belgium it's called fleur amour uh, it's in an old castle in northeastern belgium uh, was 22nd here uh, the uh, in each room of this castle there is one main designer who has a whole group of volunteers who help and it is just fascinating what people make i went and volunteered there last year so i kind of got to see <laughs> you're like Ooh, okay yeah <laughs> how do you so, bring that here? so yeah. but that kind of stuff does not exist here right so you have the philadelphia flower show uh -huh. in march and you know that's kind of the big thing this is a big country that's right yeah know? we have um maybe the equivalent here would be like the rose festival here in portland with the floats right. but that's on kind of a yeah, much it's, more it's 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 still different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, uh, here it's like more volume and, uh -huh. you know, the bigger is better type yeah, thing. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and over there, I, I mean, maybe I'm biased, but I think that the artistic uh, outlook of it all is very, very different. Yeah, so would you call yourself, um, you know, a flower designer or do you consider yourself an artist first? Is it, are they synonymous with one mm. another? No, I, I don't know. It's kind of a, a, um, a difficult, well, not a difficult question to answer. People called, told me for a long time that I was an artist and yeah. I felt very uncomfortable huh. about that. Okay. Um, you know, I think of an artist uh, as a person who starts from scratch. So like a person who draws or paints or who writes, you know, you have a blank slate. Yeah. I have 
this gorgeousness. But what do you do with it? <laughs> <laughs> See, I would not know without yeah. taking a workshop. And so, and so that's why I kind of had a really hard time with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do believe that I'm creative. <laughs> yeah. Well, and she's an artist. Let's be real. <laughs> Flowers are your medium. How's it that? Is, it is my medium. Yeah. Yeah, it is my medium. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about sort of um, trends that you personally ascribe to? We talked a little bit about, you know, kind of the differences, but you're yeah. doing a lot of things like this, this yeah. wood lawn. Yeah. And, uh -huh. So um, I have never been a trendy person. Yeah. N with nothing. <laughs> not with clothes, not yeah. with nothing. So I, um, I never really have followed flower trends. Uh -huh. too. I've always kind of been aware, especially since social media started, you yeah. know, been aware of what's out there but I don't like to follow it. Yeah. That being said, if, uh, if there is a client who wants something that's really trendy, I can certainly do that uh -huh. because the client is queen. But um, it's not something that I particularly care to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, about 11 years ago, I, um, it was a childhood memory that kind of spread, that got this thing going with the woodlands and uh, I developed that into a definite uh, um, path of yeah. my uh, of what I do so it's very not very many flowers lots of uh, always incorporate wood or bark and lots of textures which I define as anything but flowers anything so, but flowers so um, uh, um, seed pods and buds and succulents and, and branches and uh, interesting foliage and stuff like that and so that was something that uh, I started to, uh, to develop and then I really, really loved it. And actually by the time, uh, the last year that I did a lot of weddings, 25% um, of, of the brides uh, hired me to do woodlands. So, because of this, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. So, yeah. so it's, it, it's, we're coming back to you know, what I've said so many times, if you really love something, do it, post it, you know, and the client will come to you. And then about eight years ago or so, I started to do the botanical couture, which totally yeah. came out of nowhere. Also, uh, not only am I not a trendy person, uh, <laughs> I, know about, right? I, I know nothing about fashion. You know, I've never worn high heels, you know, yeah, I don't right. wear a purse, I don't wear Jewelry, you know, right. all that kind of stuff. But with the flowers, it was just something different. And Did were you called to it? Some, I mean, like you know, if you're starting something out like that, what makes you think I should create a botanical ring or earrings? Um, or? So it uh, it kind of went in stages. Uh, it started with purses. I saw this beautiful picture uh, of um, in a in a floral design book. Uh, it was a, a dining room in a gorgeous home in Paris, old home, and a big table, and on each place setting, there was a hostess gift, and it was a botanical purse. Ah. And they were the, they were all different, and they were these small purses, and I thought, geez, oh. I wonder how you make these. Yeah. And so I kind of figured out how to do it, and then I started to promote, well, promote is a big uh, word, I started to make them, take pictures, etc. And I did a lot of them for flower girls because oh, they just sure. thought yeah, it was really right. sweet, yeah, uh -huh. just, you know, small little purses. Next thing were the shoes. And I saw this incredible book by, uh, it's called Chou Fleur. Chou Fleur. And uh, it was, um, it's a collection of uh, virtual images of purses and shoes that are all made with elements of flowers. Oh, wow. And it was fascinating. And the guy who, who did it, his name is Michel Treshkov. He's French with a Russian name and he lives in New York. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> and he, um, uh, it was just fascinating. And so I was, uh, I, I kept on wondering how I could do that. I talked to a bunch of people seeing if somebody would be interested in creating a shape of a shoe. Um, I had no luck and so at age, I like to say that at age six, uh, 59 I went and bought my first high heel shoes <laughs> <laughs> and decorated them and so I've, I've decorated a lot of them since then. And then it just kind of evolved it, after it kind that. Of, and, yeah. and you know it's like when I look at the first one that I did I thought, oh seriously that's what it looked like uh, and then the head pieces 
Um, this photographer in town, Ted Mishima, uh, I knew of him. I'd never had worked with him. Uh, he contacted me in January of 2011. He wanted to do um, an interesting, he wanted to explore a, a way of uh, doing photography that dated back to the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. And he wanted an interesting, uh, he wanted an interesting subject to photograph. So um, he asked me if I would be interested in collaborating with him and make a botanical headpiece. And I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> right. And so I wrote back and I said, you mean a flower crown or something like that? And he wrote back and sent me pictures with these really wild, I mean, really wild uh, headpieces. And I wrote back to him and I said, well, let's meet for coffee. And I have no clue <laughs> on how to do this, but I'll figure it out. And so uh, I did figure it out. He got a model. He took great pictures. Uh, we posted, we both blogged about it. We posted on social media and we got a great response. And so that was the beginning of what is still going on. Actually, on Sunday, we're having another photo shoot. So what's been so wonderful to collaborate with him is that several times a year we we'll go, huh, uh, let's get together for a photo let's shoot. Do it. Or, yeah, or uh -huh. we send each other a picture or something like that. Um, he lets me do what I want, uh, he chooses a model, um, he chooses the location, and then we do it. And so it always pushes me to do something that I haven't done before, yeah. and uh, it's super, super fun. And it challenges you it's then, cha too. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah. And so, um, and then the jewelry uh, happened because the first time that I traveled uh, to teach, one of the students showed me a picture of a botanical ring and she said uh, on her phone and she said, you made this, right? And I said, no, I didn't. And she said, well, can you teach us how to make it? And I said, well, well <laughs> let me think sure, about yes. this. <laughs> and uh, I had some um, aluminum uh, wire and I just kind of figured out a total symbol base for a ring. And then there again, curiosity kind of got me going on was rings and then earrings and then necklaces and bracelets. And, and then I was interested after that to explore how to do dresses. And then that kind of took a little bit of life of its own. And um, so, yeah. And so basically when I travel, uh, uh, when I teach, it's, uh, people always ask me to teach the woodlands and the botanical culture. Amazing. It's very fun. If someone wanted to try their hand at creating something mm -hmm. at home, but they don't identify as mm -hmm. having, um, you know, that level of creativity that you have when it comes mm -hmm. to flowers, do you have any, like, suggestions for people who are starting out? Um, so, uh, I still, I don't do classes anymore the way I used to, but I'm happy to do classes if the person who contacts me um, will organize it and ah. we'll have a group of between six and eight people. To come in? Yeah, and, uh -huh. to come okay. in. Yeah. So, so that is one thing. Uh, I started to do videos. Um, uh, I put one out last year, so tutorials uh, on how to do jewelry. And later this month, we'll have one that comes out on Woodlands. Excellent. And so, so uh, I started um, being an introvert, doing videos was like the last <laughs> thing that I wanted to do. Uh, but um, so many people ask me about it. Yeah. And so uh, I finally kind of gathered all my courage <laughs> to do this. And uh, uh, so, yeah. Well, so that's another way. And the, another thing that I do, um, uh, I do private classes, you know, if people are interested in that. Or I've also done Skype classes. Oh, smart. Yeah. Yeah. So readers, you don't yeah. have to be here in Portland. Yeah. You could Skype in. Yeah. One of the things that I appreciate having taken a wreath making workshop right here is you are able to pull out mm -hmm. everyone's individual creativity, which mm -hmm. I think is such a gift as an instructor. Mm -hmm. um, because I came in thinking it was going to sort of be like paint by numbers, you know? Oh, oh gosh, And no. then we built the wreath <laughs> and you're like, okay, go, you know, pick your things. And I'm like, ha ah, ha, where do yeah, I start? Yeah. But um, I think everyone who left that workshop left feeling like I've made something magnificent. Yeah. yeah. Um, how do you do, is that just like natural? How, yeah. Is that something you've learned over time? No, that's, that's how I always teach. Uh -huh. You know, it's actually funny. The, the first time that I went to China uh, to teach, several people said to me, you can't teach the way you teach. And I said, what's that? 
And they said, well, they're used to copy what the instructor makes. Right. And I said, I don't teach that way. Yeah. And, and every single person who mentioned that to me said, well, it's not going to work. And I said, well, that's how I teach and that's <laughs> what I'm going to do. Yeah. Those were the most creative people. Uh -huh. it, it was just amazing. And so th the way I teach, you know, it's like I have sample, samples that I make the day before. I explain mechanics and then I let people choose what they want to, what they are interested in working in. Uh, there are a lot of people who teach who give a, each student a bucket with flowers. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody does it differently. I, I would not like... Uh, for somebody to tell me what to use to make something. Uh -huh. And I don't want to tell anybody what to use. And it's always amazing to see what people pick. Right. And then how they put it together. And maybe something they wouldn't even necessarily realize they were right. drawn to. You you set up the space for them and then they have free will. Right. Too. Uh -huh. Totally. Yeah. yeah. It's super, super fun. I always say it makes my heart sing to yeah. see what they do. <laughs> yes. It's super fun. So great. Yeah. Okay. This is the part where we answer, you answer 10 questions. Yes. Whatever comes to mind, rapid fire. Are you nervous? A little. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You should be, it's terrifying. Okay, number one, where is the best spot in the studio to stash secret evidence? Behind these stairs. Yeah, okay, good, yes, uh-huh. Yeah, you could totally, mm -hmm. I like it. Favorite flower? Oh. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Depends on the season. Yeah. Um, I, I love a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, Hellebore, Filarias, poppies, um, more unusual flowers. Uh -huh. uh, even though hellebores are not unusual anymore, but they didn't used to be all that much available. Yeah. Um, yeah, un unusual. Unusual, that's good. Yeah. Book or movie? Favorite book? No, just book or movie. Which one would you oh, pick? Oh, oh book. But, okay, good yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fell asleep. That was a trick question. <laughs> I fell asleep watching movies. I know, me too, I know. <laughs> Same. Um, baby's breath or never baby's breath? Never Yes, okay, breath. good answer. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Um, murder weapon of choice. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite flower season? Oh, spring. Spring. Totally spring. Hands yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, hands down. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No question. No question. Okay. No question. I, I wasn't yeah. sure fall right oh. now. No, no I, in the fall, I love that there's so many texture, you know, so many berries available and stuff like that. But in the spring, when nature comes to life, that's definitely. And a, a lot of my favorite flowers grow in the spring. Ah. So, yeah. Good answer. The strangest request you've ever gotten? <laughs> I actually have an answer for Oh, that. okay, good. <laughs> I did a wedding many years ago, and the bride and the groom both worked at a prison. And for the centerpieces, they wanted paraphernalia that was related to the prison. So they had <laughs> like handcuffs and whatever else. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty weird. <laughs> yes. And I can't remember if they wanted petals uh, with it or if they actually wanted a few flowers but it always stuck in my brain how like, what <laughs> that was very very strange that's a strange request for sure yeah. <laughs> um what's the most challenging thing about working in the world of flowers um i think that uh a lot of i, I mean i don't do weddings anymore and so it's a little bit different with uh with the the workshops but uh i think that people are very unaware of the cost of flowers mm. and uh, uh and the cost of flowers and how long it takes to make things and so um that's always challenging um as far as the uh for the workshops i think that as long as people look at it as an expense versus an investment in their business, uh, you know, uh, it's hard to convince people to come to workshops or to make them realize that it will be very helpful uh, for, for their own business. And for their long-term career. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. The best thing about being a floral artist is... Mm -hmm. Oh, you get to play with this wonderful medium all the time. Yeah. And make people happy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me come into your studio mm -hmm. again. Um, now I'm like brimming with ideas for a new book. Too. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs>